second segment of 30 minutes with jesus i'll be your host today today free from glasses as well so um without wasting much time let's just get right into it by appreciating our maker for making it possible for us to be counted among the living today you may want to close your eyes at this point father in the mighty name of our lord jesus internal of prophetis we bless your holy name, we adore you, we worship you, we reverence your holy name. Father, we ask that you take control of this premises. We ask that you breathe upon this atmosphere. For where you are, Lord, there is liberty. So, Lord, we welcome you here to drive this teaching to the way that it will profit your people and draw them close to you as well, to your glory and your salon. Father, let we commit everything that we set out to do right now into your hands. We ask that you be the driver of it, that, oh Lord, it will bring pleasure to you. And use me as your oracle, speak through me, that the heart of the people may be blessed to your glory and your salon. And right now, as the Bible says, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon every serpent and every scorpion, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Right now, I stand upon that authority, decreeing and declaring that this atmosphere is free from every enemy projection every enemy activity in the name of jesus amen thank you heavenly father we give you the praise we give you the honor the adoration blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name amen so folks today's topic is um called the builder of men praise the lord so we are going to be as fast as possible. Two minutes is already gone. So what is a builder? A builder is someone or an individual who creates, constructs, and develops a thing. A builder is also considered as a repairer as well. That is taking what you thought was spoiled already or was something that is beyond repair and fix it make it brand new again so yeah from okay our foundational scripture is taken from first corinthians chapter 3 from verse 8 to 9 it's a long read so you may want to relax on this one now he that's planted and he that's watered are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's buildings. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build it their own. But let every man take heed how he build it up how he viewed it thereupon for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ praise the lord hallelujah so our objectives are twofold how does god build men and examples of god who god will build how does God build men and examples of those who of sorry examples of who God will build praise the Lord hallelujah so please note these three things these three things are important as we go along note them most times we forget that we are all laborers in God's hand or in God's vineyard as one laborer Sorry, as one labors, so shall the quality and quantity of his reward be. As you labor, that is the time, the effort you put into it will show the quality and quantity of reward you receive thereof. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then number two thing to note is we are all god's building as far as the scriptures are concerned we are all god's building for god is the builder of a, of men nothing can be added on top of what 
God has already done or built. You cannot add to it, you cannot subtract to it. So, so we should take heed how we sometimes try to recreate or reconstruct or redevelop uh, uh, what the creator have has already done meaning that we cannot add or subtract to what god has already done like those who try to reassemble themselves again that is telling the maker what you made is not right so people to, like a man trying to become a woman you're just telling your maker that you made a mistake making me a man i'm supposed to be a woman you know or the other way around so yeah we are not supposed to add or subtract to it and then number three thing to note is that greatness remember that our topic is the builder of men so god is the one who builds men so greatness is not hereditary it's not hereditary only god makes a man great example david from the house of jesse in Ruth uh, chapter 4 verse 22 David sorry Jesse was not great so David came out of Jesse and David is great so greatness is not hereditary another example is is Abraham Abraham is from the house of Terah Terah was his father Terah was not great but Abraham was great or is great he abraham came out of terror so greatness is not hereditary you can be a loser sorry your parents could be losers but god who is the builder of men can turn you into another man just like he did to Saul. he said when you shall meet the company of these praisers you shall begin to prophesy with them and become turned into another man so god can turn you into another person that you least expect praise the lord hallelujah so i took this and uh, um, the, the the abraham terror thing is from um genesis eleven twenty eight. that's where you see where terror begat uh, abraham so now how does god build men here are some examples we have i think about we have about oh my god seven examples so i have to be fast now eight minutes is gone um god build men this is now how does god build men here are some examples number one god build men by decorating or beautifying them ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 10 to 12 says i clothed thee also with broidered work and showed and showed thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck, and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in that ear in, in thy ears, and beautify and sorry and beautiful crown upon thy head this is how god we we dealt with this especially uh, on the there's a topic we dealt extensively on this i even showed you a depiction of how god beautifies one physical beauty yeah so i won't want to dwell upon it much today so Number two is God built men by designing them and their destiny. Now, Jeremiah 1 5 says this Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And Isaiah 44 verse 24 says, Thus says the Lord, we take authority over that foul spirit. You are destroyed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, thus says the Lord in Isaiah 44 verse 24, 
thy redeemer and he that form thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth. I take authority over that foul spirit. You are arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth myself. So, God builds people regardless of what that person's plans are for himself. We have heard uh, this saying that man proposes, but God disposes. We've heard that saying, and God never forgets what he said he will do. He never forgets a person. He never forgets what his promises are. You can see he told Jeremiah that, I know thee even before you were formed in your mother's belly. So God does not forget. He accomplishes everything he says he will now in Isaiah 49 verse 70 sorry verse 15 also says can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb yeah they may forget this is God speaking now that to a woman who's breastfeeding her child probably will definitely forget that she or forget about feeding her newborn yet will I not forget this so God will not forget us so he was comparing himself like sorry putting himself in a position of a you know how a, a, a new mother who would give back to a baby and then this baby needs the woman knows that the baby needs to be fed all the time so it's rare for a woman to forget her suckling baby. So this is what God is telling you that he will never, if that woman, there's a possibility that she will forget her baby, but there is, for him, he will never forget. That is just what God is trying to say. So, and then Isaiah 49 verse 16 says, Behold, I have grieved thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me that means you are here on the palm of god how can somebody be looking at his palm and forget you on a daily basis every second every he can never forget you so god is the designer who can never forget his design and his designs destiny he cannot forget i am his design and he cannot forget his design's destiny. He cannot just shove my destiny aside. He will never do that. So, especially in this season of, of COVID-19, we need to understand that, that the world, yes, it is on lockdown, but it is not the end of the world. God is still in control. The Antichrist can't come here, not when we are here. It's not possible. So, Number three, God built men by garnishing them. Garnishing them meaning that when one thinks that he or she has enough ab abundance, God surprises them with what God, with what um, cannot be contained in their houses or substances that they are, as in, well, God blesses them with substances that may not be, you know, there may not be room enough to contain it. Yes. I also call garnishing um, the, the icing on the cake or the finishing touches. Yeah. So you may take your pick on that one. So plus, only those who bring all the types yes are allowed or permitted to enjoy such garnishing i call it the lord's garnishing it is only those who are covenant practitioners are permitted are qualified candidates to enjoy the lord's garnishing so malachi 6 malachi says this in malachi 3 10 bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, 
say the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be no room enough to receive it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in one word, it means addition on top of your already abundance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God built, number four, God built men by furnishing them, furnishing them. Have a good look at the tabernacle or the temple built by Solomon. The, 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 the tabernacle during the uh, Moses time, God gave Moses the blueprint on how it should be created, constructed, and developed. So in, that, in Exodus 25 verse 9, it says, Make this tabernacle and all its furnishing exactly like the pattern I will show you. This is now God speaking to Moses. Now, so in Exodus 26 to 30, the whole of when you read from Exodus 26 all the way 27, 28, 29, 30, it talks about how Moses followed the blueprint God gave him to build the tabernacle, which wasn't easy at all, but they got it right anyway. So, and... Um, they got it the way God commanded. You can also find this in Acts 7 verse 44. Then in 1 Kings 6 from verse 1 to 38, Solomon also built the temple of God as God instructed. God gave had already given the plan to David. So David handed it over to Solomon. So today we believe that the pattern which the temple of God was built was the same pattern in which God designed the human body by the way we know that God dwells in temples in first king 8 that's where we know because that was the the where um the whole congregation gathered for sacrificial uh, gathering towards the to to the lord so they all gathered in the new temple that Solomon had built in in, that was in first king six so first king eight was where the the uh, uh, the king that's king solomon blessed them and prayed for them and then they sacrificed to the lord so for god to say that he will dwell in us in second corinthians 6 verse 16 ezekiel 37 verse 28 and revelation 21 verse 3 that means we are as the same as the temple Solomon built or even the tabernacle built by Moses. So it means that um, the architect designed us. That is the architect himself, the architect of us, which is Jesus, uh, which is his father and him and the Holy Spirit. Because they were the three that said, let us make man in our own image. So they were the ones and... They are the ones that did it. So the architect um, designed the architect designed us as the temple built with hands of men. He designed us in the form of the temple built by men. That is, he gave them these blueprints, how he wanted to be. So he knows the blueprint of how we were designed because he designed us. So he also gave them that same blueprint to design the earthly physical temple. You could see and worship him in it for he dwells in temples. But again, God, furthermore, God said in Acts 7, 48 to 49, he said that the most, okay, it says, that the Most High does not dwell in temple, in temples made with hands, as said the prophets. You see, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? Said the Lord. Or what is the place of my rest? So, in in line with this, God furnished us in order to dwell in us not in temple built with hands all those was just illustration of of how we are internally that was why i started with the temple thing built by moses and 
tabernacle by Moses and temple by Solomon. And then God furnished, he furnished us in order to dwell in us, not in temples built with him, but the one he, be, but he wishes, he desires to dwell in the one he built by himself, which is you and I, you know. So in Acts 7 verse 51, this is what it says. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So, did, so do ye. So God is telling us that our body is the dwelling place. Our body is his dwelling place. So stop resisting the Holy Spirit. Stop resisting him by defiling yourselves like your fathers did. You know, allowing yourself uh, to be to be occupied with um, demonic things and doctrines and beliefs and and immoral, imm immorality and the rest of them. So by you defiling, you're actually defiling the temple of the Holy Spirit, you know, the temple of God. And, you know, you can only, this can only be achieved when you give your life to Jesus and then the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside of you, um, um, inside of you. So we're saying that when you take a look at yourself, it is well furnished. That is how God built. He well, he, he furnishes it. If it was not so, God will not dwell there. If he did not single-handedly furnish you, he will not desire to dwell in you. So he built you and furnished you for himself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So verse five, now, number five, sorry. God built men by, by stabilizing them. God built men by stabilizing them. If you are not stabilized, you are as good as a runabout or move about. But, okay, that means that you are not built yet. If you are moving from here, just like the enemy, uh, to and fro, to and fro, you are not built, you are not grounded, you are not established, you know. So God desires to uh, build men by, uh, by first, um, stabilizing them stabilizing example we see where god told isaac in genesis 26 from verse 1 to 5 that he should not go down into egypt but dwell in the land which god would tell him because of the famine so this is god commanding isaac not to not to um move an inch from where god told him not to move to you know god told him just stay there God said, I will stabilize you here despite the famine. Don't go to Egypt, you know. So God is the one who builds through stabilizing people. He stabilizes you first. And, you know, so that you will not be a move about. It is okay. And also for you not to miss your destiny, you know. So God is the one who sets out to stabilize an individual. If we will listen to his voice, it's as easy as that. Maybe you are, you can't hear the voice of God. This is where you have to, this is the junction where you should begin to seek to hear his voice. Either through dreams or through, through a knowing that the Holy Spirit always places in one's hand. Or through the audible voice or a, you know, of God. So you begin to position yourself in that direction. So number six, God builds men by establishing them. So after stab after stability, when a man after being becoming stabilized, then God establishes him, you know, in God giving design establishment. In Genesis twenty six from verse twelve to thirteen, God established Isaac in that land, and he received in the same year an hundredfold, and the and the Lord blessed him, and the, the man waxed great, and went forward, and grew until he became very great. That's what God does. He, he, he first of all um, beautifies you, and then when he finished beautifying you, he, he, he designs you. He designs your destiny. He, he, he then garnishes it. Then he furnishes it. Then he stabilizes it. And, and then he establishes it. That is what God does. And then finally, 
God, that is number seven. God built men by perfecting it, perfecting them. After he establishes you, he then perfects all that concerns you to a point where your enemies will begin to envy you. Just like Isaac in Genesis 26 verse 13 to 14. It says, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flock and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. See, God perfects you until your enemies become, they begin to envy you. That is God's perfection, by the way. So, example of who God will build. Now, just a quick note before we double into it. Most times when we trace where evil money is coming from, we will identify false worship, false as in false worship, cults, pagan worship. Now, those those who are those now those now, these are the people, sorry. Now, these are the people who want to build themselves by all means. They don't want God to build, to help them. Some of them feel that there is no God. Some of them feel that um, they are the uh, master of themselves. So they double into um, false worship, occultism, pagan worship, just to be rich or, or so on. And then... Um, God being God now without God being their builder that is true they end up they end up in cults now follow that money you will identify if you follow such money such wealth today even I don't want to mention names there are people when you follow their smelly money it will lead you to because people think they are great today Actually, they are not. They are worms. They are worms. As far as God's standard concerned, they are worms. They are not great. So, when you follow such wealth, you, you will see that it will lead you. You will trace it back to false worship and occultism. Now, um, and most people got in, get entangled. Sorry. Most people get entangled with such um, tradition and such a um, way of lifestyle which is really 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 going to lead them to where they wish that they will never be found which is hell so Jeremiah 10 talks about all this false way of making wealth practices and 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 false worship so you may want to look at Jeremiah 10 and then so who will allow God to build him? Number one, those who will get out of their comfort zone to go where God will tell them to go, like Abraham in Genesis 12. Number two, those who will, who will obey divine instruction without question in Genesis 22 from verse 2 to 10, like just like um, Abraham when he went on to sacrifice his son. So, those number three who will god build those who are in a hurry to obey god and will and god will also be in a hurry to build them or to make them he is the maker of men he is the maker of look at david david came from nothing Je, um, jesse was not was not really he was not he was a nobody but god identified David from there. That's why I told you that greatness is not hereditary. God identified David and brought him out and made him and built him. So God is the builder or maker of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So um, number four, who will God build? Those who are foolish enough to obey him blindly. Yes, without questioning. Just like Abraham in Genesis 12. Say, get off out of your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. He doesn't even know where the land is, but he 
obeyed God blindly. He followed him stupidly, foolishly. So those are the kind of God, people God rebuked. Number five, those who do not concern themselves with people, with, with those who do not concern themselves with people's views or whatever people think. Like David in First Samuel 17 where his brothers were like, what are you doing here? We are here, we are here trying to kill this uh, Goliath and you're here distracting us. David did not mind what they are saying. David was asking what we be giving to somebody who would take this uh, uncircumstanced Philistine out of the way. What would be the reward? So David did not pay attention to their, you know, murmuring. So number six, who will God build? Those who will wait for God's time and season to carry them to their high places. Not through, not through corruption, not through corrupted money, uh, false worship or paganism. No, but the, the sweet smelling kind of um, the Lord's garnishing, the Lord's furnishing, the Lord's um, um, enhancement, the Lord's everything. So when God gives you such uh, wealth, it is peace, 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 peace. That's what you experience. Our time is up. So. Genesis 14, 22 to 23 says, I have lifted, I have, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, um, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread, even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is in, that is dying, lest thou should, shouldest say, I have made Abraham rich. This is our father of faith, really demonstrating what I've just told you. It's not corruption money. That's why he say, look at my hands. They are clean. It's not tomorrow you say you have made Abraham rich. My riches is straight, direct um, transport from heaven. So hold your peace. So And that's what God wants us to wait, to be patient enough to wait for him. So as we have heard this message today, position yourselves for God, who is the builder of mighty men, to build you. Starting from this lockdown to the time of open up, meaning that this lockdown will help you to position yourself for God to build you and usher you into the perfection of the realm which God wants you to be in. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. So, um... Don't worry, we're nearly there. By God's grace, everything will be fine. Everything will come back. I wouldn't say back to normal. Greater normalcy. That's what I'll say. So anyway, uh, if you have heard this message today, as our time has gone, please say this after me. If you love to give your life to Jesus, which this time is the best time to do it. Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of grace. I've come to make amends. I realize that I'm a terrible sinner. Lord, have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every trace of unrighteousness and iniquity found in me. Draw me close to you. Help me to follow you forever and never looking back at my former life. To you be all the glory, honor, and adoration. Thank you, Jesus, for making me yours today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So if you have said that prayer, welcome to the family of Yeshua Amashia. And I'll leave you with this. God bless you. God keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace, his peace alone. Shalom. Bye.